can plant based diets heal arthritis and autoimmune diseases? Today, I'm going to be showing you incredible stories from scientific literature of plant based diets helping patients. And also, I'm going to explain the science behind it. So, you don't want to miss this episode. For those of you that know my story, you know that I got better with a plant-based diet with my own arthritis. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Dr. Mikey Yu, board certified rheumatologist and also autoimmune patient. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about the power of plant-based diets with autoimmune disease and arthritis. And I'm gonna tell you how it works and also I'm gonna deliver the scientific evidence behind this reasoning. I know some of you have gone better with paleo diets and keto diets, and I don't doubt that for a second, but today I'm going to be focusing specifically on plant-based diets. Beyond autoimmune disease and arthritis, a whole food plant-based diet has been able to help patients with their blood pressure, with diabetes, and high cholesterol as well. Now, a whole food plant-based diet isn't magic, but it can do wonders for different patients. And I'm not the only one that's a big fan of plant-based diets for arthritis and autoimmune disease. The Arthritis Foundation has talked about plant-based diets as well. And I quote, in a 2015 study in the Journal of Complementary Therapies in Medicine, 600 participants followed a vegan diet for three weeks and it significantly reduced the C-reactive protein lab, which is an inflammatory marker. And a 2017 study also showed that looking at 17 published studies in public health nutrition found that following a vegetarian and vegan diet overall also was associated with lower C-reactive protein levels as well. Now, before I go into the science of this, I want to present to you some more incredible testimonials that were published in scientific articles. I just recently gave a three-hour talk at a conference called The Plantrician, teaching medical professionals how to utilize a plant-based diet and other lifestyle measures to help with patients with autoimmune diseases. Now, some of these articles I'm talking about are the same articles I presented to the medical professionals. So there's a new study called Plans for Joints, which is a study on rheumatoid arthritis that was done in Northern Europe, near the Netherlands. And this was published August of 2023. So this is new data that I'm sharing with you. So what the study was about was that the patients with RA were put on a 16-week study. They were put on a whole food plant-based diet along with exercise and stress interventions. The patients in the group that went on this intervention with the whole food plant-based diet had lower disease activity scores and inflammation as measured by a rheumatoid arthritis disease activity score called the DAS-28. Not only did this intervention help patients with their joints and pain, but they also were able to lower their weight and also their cholesterol levels as well. It was just four months long and the patients improved their rheumatoid arthritis with this intervention. Also in a study that came out in 2021 focusing on rheumatoid arthritis, there was a three month study that had patients with RA go on a diet that excluded meat dairy, and also gluten as well. The patients that went on this elimination diet, and they called it the primitive diet, their disease activity scores also improved with rheumatoid arthritis as well, meaning they had less joint pain and swelling also. So these patients were able to eat a plant-based diet, but also had some fish as well, which is just fine. These patients did very well in the study also. So a plant-based diet doesn't mean that you have to be completely vegan. There are different types of plant-based diets. You can even be on a Mediterranean diet, and that's still a plant-predominant diet. Now, let's move on from rheumatoid arthritis to now a disease called psoriatic arthritis, which is another autoimmune arthritis. And this was a case study that was pretty phenomenal. This was published in the American Journal of Lifestyle Medicine. And this was about a 40-ish year old teacher who was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis, who had pain in her knees, her hands, and other joints as well. And this patient was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis back in 2003. And the patient was on a medication called methotrexate, which some of you may not be a fan of because of some of the side effects that you may have experienced. But this patient was on methotrexate and their symptoms were mostly under control. However, in 2018, 
the patient did undergo a whole food plant-based intervention. And this diet was free of salt, oil, and added sugars. After going under a whole food plant-based intervention, the patient was able to get off their methotrexate medication and actually became symptom-free. That's pretty cool. I've seen this before in my own clinic. I've heard it from other patients as well. So it's pretty cool that this study was actually published because it gives credible evidence that this can actually work. So we talked about rheumatoid arthritis already and psoriatic arthritis, and I kept digging into the literature and I found an article on ulcerative colitis. And for those of you that are familiar with ulcerative colitis, it is an autoimmune disease that attacks the GI tract. And there can be a lot of inflammation in the intestines. And we control it with medications, but little do we know that it can also be controlled with food as well. So there was a patient in this study. So it's a case series. So they look at different cases in this case study, but I'm going to talk to you about one of the cases. So the first case, a 35 year old female that was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. This patient's ulcerative colitis was treated with a medication called mesalamine. Now, with this medication alone, this patient's ulcerative colitis was not in control. And this patient did eat a pretty good diet compared to a standard American diet. So the patient was eating plants, fish, meat, some grains, and processed foods. Because this patient's also, colitis wasn't exactly controlled and they did have inflammation still. This patient went to a dietetic clinic and underwent a whole food plant-based diet intervention. And with this intervention, the patient didn't get better at first. This patient had bloating and constipation. So the dietitian adjusted the patient's diet and limited high FODMAP foods. And for those of you that are familiar with FODMAPs, they're a group of foods that can worse than IBS, but in some patients just doesn't agree with them that well. So the high FODMAP foods were limited in this patient and the fiber was increased slowly. Within three weeks of being on a whole food plant-based diet, the study said that the patient improved significantly and on repeat colonoscopy, it showed no more inflammation in this patient. Now you can find the study on the internet. There are two more cases in the study that I'm not gonna go over, but they're very similar where the patient underwent a whole food plant-based intervention and the colonoscopy show little or no inflammation. Never have we thought as doctors that you can help ulcer colitis with food as well. And now the data is starting to come out. So we've talked about rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ulcer colitis. Now we're gonna move on to a study that talks about lupus and Sjogren's. And this study was published by Dr. Golner, who is a psychiatrist who runs a raw vegan diet program. And some of these patients in the study were able to not only improve the disease, some were able to get off medication and reverse the disease as well. So this study talked about these patients going on a raw vegan diet and simply improving their disease with Sjogren's and lupus. All these are examples of plant-based diets in various forms helping patients with autoimmune disease. So now I've talked about some of the evidence that's out there. Let's dive into the science and talk about why these patients improved overall with a plant-based diet. Plant-based diet, there's a couple of factors we need to focus on that specifically can help patients and that's fiber and phytonutrients and omega-3 fatty acids as well. So fiber is really, really important. Because fiber is not only a crucial part of a plant-based diet, but also is very important for the gut microbiome. Studies have shown that fiber alone can decrease inflammation with the lowering of a lab called C-reactive protein. And also fiber can help the gut flourish with healthy microbes as well. Fiber, when it's broken down by that bacteria in the gut, turns into a substance called short chain fatty acids. And short chain fatty acids, it's really important for the health of different organs, such as the brain, the lung, the joints, the bone marrows, and the fat cells as well. Fiber is found in different plants, such as spinach, broccoli, beans, flax seeds, chia seeds, and many, many other fruits and vegetables as well. So currently, in the United States, the average American is eating only 15 grams of fiber 
However, the USDA does recommend patients eat for females 25 grams of fiber at a minimum per day or 38 grams of fiber per day for men. So it's really important that we try to include these fruits and vegetables and different plants to help increase the fiber intake in our body to help with inflammation overall. Another important point is phytonutrient. Phytonutrients are the different colors of the rainbow you find in your fruits and vegetables, such as the red and tomato and the purple and grapes. What are phytonutrients? What are some of the examples? Well, if you take turmeric, turmeric is a vegetable. It's a herb as well and a spice. And it has phytonutrients such as curcumin. So that is the orange color of the turmeric and it's very active. It's very potent. It's anti-inflammatory. That's one example of a phytonutrient. Other examples of phytonutrients are lycopene in tomatoes or resveratrol in grapes and different colors of fruits that have a blue or purple tint to it. So if you take in resveratrol in your supplement or you drink wine, that has resveratrol and it's anti-inflammatory and it can be good for heart health as well. Other forms of phytonutrients are something called sulforaphane or glucosinolates. And these are found in your cruciferous vegetables. What are cruciferous vegetables? They are a group of vegetables that contain Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, and kale. They are so powerful for inflammation and for our health overall. And they provide antioxidants in our body to fight the inflammation. And I love broccoli and cauliflower and these vegetables because they activate something like a NERF2 pathway. And the NERF2 pathway, also known as the NRF2 pathway, is our antioxidant pathway and can help with detoxification, but also help fight inflammation. That's why I try to include it in my diet every day as much as I can, along with the other fruits and vegetables that I love to eat to help with my own arthritis and autoimmune disease. Something else that's also very important for inflammation is omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory. And there's a group of omega-6 fatty acids that can be pro-inflammatory but it's not always clear cut. It can be a little bit gray with the omega-6 fatty acid side. But these two omega fatty acids are always competing against each other because they go for the same enzymes. So we have a lot of omega-6 fatty acids, which comes from a Western diet, such as a lot of processed meat, a lot of pastries, a lot of greasy food and fried food that can increase your omega-6 fatty acids. And when you have a lot of that, that will overwhelm your omega-3 fatty acids, which makes it difficult for you to fight inflammation. And you can get omega-3 fatty acids from fish, from the algae oil. If you're vegan, you can get it from fish oil. You can also get it from flax seeds and chia seeds. However, flax seeds and chia seeds don't have the same bioavailability or absorption amount compared to fish or algae oil, but it can help also. So omega-3 fatty acids are very, very important, not only for brain health and heart health, but also to fight inflammation. So when you limit the amount of processed food and ultra processed food, we allow our body's ability to use the omega-3 fatty acids to fight the inflammation in our body. So a whole food plant-based diet has a lot of fiber, a lot of phytonutrients, and a lot of omega-3 fatty acids to help with inflammation. Now, after hearing about this, you're probably saying, look, Dr. Yu, I am not vegan. I can't eat vegan. I can't do a whole food plant-based diet. So I will tell you, I'm not vegan either. You don't have to do a whole food plant-based diet 100% to get the most benefit. You can do a Mediterranean diet or something like a plant-predominant diet to even get some benefit out of this, as long as you're getting some fruits and vegetables and some fiber in your body to help with the gut microbiome and also inflammation. The American College of does recommend a Mediterranean diet to help fight for inflammation in their guidelines under the Integrative Medicine Guidelines for Rheumatoid Arthritis. So you don't have to go whole food plant-based all the way. You could do a combination of things. Now, does a patient that go on a whole food plant-based diet go reverse and heal their disease 100%? No, not every patient will have that same result. However, some patients 
will be able to heal their arthritis and autoimmune disease. And there are a lot of testimonials on the internet, but there's also great articles and testimonials in these official published scientific studies also. In the future, I'm going to go over other diets such as the paleo diet as well, which has helped different patients with their autoimmune disease also. There are some testimonials online that these patients have gotten better and also been able to reverse their disease. And the diet that's very popular on the internet called the Army Paracol Diet is one example of that. So we'll look at the evidence of that in the future and see what we can get out of it and learn something from the science. So as you know, I got better with the plant-based diet, but I understand that not everyone will go through the same journey as me. So I'm open to other diets as well, and I'm always looking for scientific evidence to back up any claims, which is very important to me. So I wanna hear from you. What did you learn from this talk? And are you on a plant predominant or a plant-based diet? And has it helped you with your situation? Because it has helped me in my journey. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and comment below and let me know what you want me to talk about in the future because I'm happy to get ideas from you all and keep giving you content that you want to hear about. And I'm always looking for the up-to-date evidence on food and integrated medicine and alternative therapies so I can show you all the possibilities of healing autoimmune disease out there. I'll see you guys next time.